So guys, it's finally here, the final shoe for the clock. I think it's worth the risk. Let's go for it. Barely ever see these in a thrift store. Because I'm in like the lowest level of the parking garage. Guys. Oh, no way. I picked up thinking it was gonna be a great deal and then I realized after we sold it that That's it. It's over. Actually, at the time of filming this, I'm not 100% sure if it's over. I'm just assuming based on the sneaker collection fund and what we have to sell, which I think will sell. But hey, film this preemptively because I really do think that this could be the last episode of the $20 sneaker collection. But with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in to what could be the last episode of the $20 sneaker collection. We start things off with a sneaker collection fund of $185.89. But first, before we get into it, this. We created Apothecary Socks to be your sneakers' favorite socks. And not only do they look great with your sneakers because we have a ton of different colorways that match all of the sneakers in your collection, but they also feel great on feet because of our isoweave technology and the fact that our socks are so crazy comfortable. So if you want to check out Apothecary for yourself, make sure to click the link in the top of the description below and grab a pair of your sneakers' new favorite socks. But before we get into the thrifting, we did have two sneaker sales over the last week or two, and the first pair that we sold were the Air Jordan 1 Low Fuchsias. So we bought that pair from Buffalo Exchange for $35, which I thought was a huge steal, and we ended up selling it on eBay for $107, which was way more than I expected. Then after after fees and shipping, we were left with $91.42 to add back into the sneaker collection fund, which means we had a profit of $56.42, which was awesome. I never expected to sell this shoe for that much. I was hopeful that we'd sell it for around there, but I didn't think it was actually going to happen. I had it listed on eBay for like a week and a half, and it sold. And then the second shoe that we sold were the Under Armour Curry 8 Flows in the classy colorway, or like the light pink colorway. We grabbed that pair from Goodwill for $15, and we ended up selling it on eBay for $30, which unfortunately is less than I wanted to sell that shoe for, which is fine, I guess, because we sold the ones for so much more than I thought we'd sell them for. I thought these shoes might sell for like 80 or even 100, because if you look at the pairs on StockX, they go for so much, but I guess there's not that many sales, so not that many people want them, at least not in used condition. So, like I said, we sold these shoes for 30 bucks on eBay, and we were able to add $27.60 back into the sneaker collection fund after fees, which means that we had a profit of $12.60. I mean, hey, it's still almost doubling your money, so it's not a bad thing, but I really was hoping for a lot more money, especially Especially because we're trying to save up for the Air Jordan 1 Chicago's, which are a very expensive shoe. And over the weekend, I didn't film any of this, but over the weekend, I went searching for pairs at local uh, sneaker consignment stores, online, all over the place, to try and find where the best place to buy this pair would be. And unfortunately, I didn't find anything for less than like $500 to $550, which I feel like is just way too much. So I think what we're gonna do in today's episode is buy as many pairs as we possibly can, flip them all as quickly as possible, and try and buy a pair of the final shoes for the clock in today's episode. But I'll be honest, with you guys. I don't know if this is going to happen. I don't know if this is going to work. And just to refresh your memory on what the clock looks like, very heavy, <laughs> very large. I still don't know what I'm going to do with this at the end of the series. I'm sorry, Ben. Watch out, buddy. My dog's on the floor. Oh, wow. I'm crushing with that. Oh. That is currently where we are at. We need one more shoe that goes right here, and I think in today's episode, we can get it. But hey, with that, let's head out thrifting, and after those two sales, we actually have $304.91 to go thrifting with, which in my opinion, is more than enough to make an extra 100 to $200 in profit. So, let's go do it. Well, Air Force One reacts, I think. Are these reacts, or are these just, no, these are standard. With an interesting, like, ripstop upper. I don't know if these are the 21s or 22s, but 32. In pretty decent condition. Let me check these guys out. These are the 21s and there are no go, so I'm gonna leave these. Got some Adidas top 10s here, and these are really nice white and red colorway. This is actually the first place I got my pair of top 10s back in 2009, I think, 2010. I got a maroon and white pair. So cool to see these. For 35 bucks, probably not worth it though. All right, so these are 45. I bought these for 90 with no insole. Do these ones have an insole? Let's see. They do. Oh, I'm so mad right now. That's crazy. Oh, I'm gonna have to buy these though. Dang, maybe I'll sell a pair that without the insole because this is a nicer pair with size, size 10. I think it's even the same size. That's nuts. That's so frustrating. Okay, let's grab them. 45, absolutely worth it. So I'm kind of on the fence about these. They're in decent condition. They are how much? Let's see, 36. And I've seen pairs go for like 20, but I've also seen pairs go for like 150. All in similar conditions. What size are these? These are a size 5Y. Let me check 5Y specifically. All right, I'm gonna leave them. I don't think they're worth it. For today, we got the Syracuse Dunks. 
5k wool socks. Looking fresh. Looks like we got some Adidas 4D. Look at that. That's crazy. Let's see uh, how much these are going for. 32. 32 bucks for a 3D printed midsole. That's not bad. Let me check these guys out. So it looks like brand new, they're going for like 110, but used are going for like 40. And these are 32, I think, or 35. 32. So I'm going to leave them. Mids. Some mid ones, black and gold for 65. Let me check these guys out. So they are 65, so it is a bit of a risk, but I did find some pairs on eBay for like 120. So I think it's worth the risk. Let's go for it. Got some really great pickups at Buffalo today. I'm stoked on these. Bodega New Balance 327s, super clean colorway. Love Bodega. I always kill it for 100 bucks. Not bad. Too big though. Got the Raptor 37s, some bronze. Some interesting Air Forces here. Got some Hoka's, New Balance 327s. Did I call the other ones 327s? I might have called them wrong. I don't remember. These ones are 327s. Those ones are 527s. The yellow ones here. So not too much at Second Street today, but uh, just some OG 5s for 129. Or OG colorway 5s, Byrod 5s. We've got some uh, Nike Dunk Highs, the Pandas, for 109. Not bad, probably what they're going for. The Vimeros, I love the Vimeros in a couple different colorways. I'm actually getting the yellow pair in, which I'm super soaked on. Got these 95s, 97s, got the big bubble Air Maxes, nice. That's crazy, a 7, 150. So Atmos has the lucky green ones, they got the Skylines, they got the, uh, what is it, the washed pinks. Decent one selection. A couple years ago, you wouldn't find these sitting anywhere. Dunks, we got the uh, Be True to Your Schools, we got the Spruces, we got the uh, the Knicks. Very nice. And then of course, the undefeated Air Force is in a giant size. Cool to see for how much. 124, not bad, size 14. So Atmos had some really great stuff. Just nothing I wanted to grab for the series. There was a bunch of stuff I wanted to grab for personal, but not for the series. So on the next spot. Asics Gel A3 is in this nice maroon and gold colorway, but that seems to be about it. For how much? Let's see. 25 bucks. Huh. Probably not worth it. Got some black Nike sneakers over here. Nike Flight Somethings for 25. Eh, might as well check these out. They're called the Flight Light Mid. And they're going for like 15 to 30 bucks. So that's a no-go. Got some LeBrons over here. And then some uh, React Nikes of some kind. Not too much on this side of the store. How much are these going for? These are going for, there's no price. Huh, let me check these out. So these are the Rugrats KD6s. And they kind of have the Phoenix Suns colorway, so. I don't know, maybe they'd be uh, popular right now, I'm not sure, but I don't, again, I don't know what the price is, but I'm assuming it's like probably 15 to 20 bucks, and even then it's just not worth it. We got some Kyrie's and some Westbrook's in the women's section, but they don't really go for anything. Or special first, uh, forces, utility forces maybe. Urban utility, I don't know. But these are like almost brand new. That's crazy, for 25 bucks. Let me check these guys out. So a couple sold for decent prices, but most of the current listings I'm seeing are for like 20 bucks, so I'm gonna leave those. All right, so unfortunately, another Play-Doh strikeout. All right, so we are back from thrifting and we actually sold all of the pairs that we had left in the $20 sneaker collection that were not on the clock, which is kind of crazy, which means we have no inventory, but I think we actually have enough to buy the shoes that we need to finish off the clock. So really big news, really excited about it. So let's just dive into it and start off with the first pair of shoes that we sold. So let's start things off with the Air Jordan 1 Mids, a shoe which, I picked up thinking it was gonna be a great deal and then I realized after we sold it that no, we actually should have left it on the shelf. So that shoe we grabbed for $65 from Buffalo Exchange and we ended up selling it on Whatnot for $50. Now, unfortunately, I, I kind of took a gamble with this one. I wasn't sure exactly how it was gonna do. Uh, it wasn't moving on eBay, so I took it to Whatnot and on Whatnot, it seemed like people just weren't that excited about it. So that's a shoe that I ended up losing $15 right off the bat, but I actually lost even more when you account for the fees. So after fees, we were left with $44.88, which means we lost $20.12, which is actually a pretty big loss, especially because we're working on such thin margins. I think to be able to grab a pair of Jordan 1 Lost and Founds, we're gonna need around $400 and that really could put us on like just the cusp of 400 bucks. So this shoe could make a break. 
the entire episode. Hopefully it doesn't, but uh, it might have. <laughs> the next shoe that we sold though was a different story. It was those Air Jordan 9s that we had just picked up from Buffalo Exchange for $45. I really wish I had found those and put those on the clock instead of the pair that I bought off GOAT, but it is what it is. Um, so we grabbed those for 45 bucks and we ended up selling them on Whatnot for $90. Which means that after fees we were left with $81.19, leaving us with a profit of $36.19. Which actually makes up for the Jordan 1 mids we just sold, but uh, we would have had $36 instead of like $16 or however much we actually ended up making out of those two sales. That's really a bummer, I forgot how big of a deal that was. And then finally, the last sneaker that we sold were the Nike Dunk Low Sambas that we picked up at the end of last week. So we grabbed those shoes from Buffalo Exchange for $47 and we ended up selling them on Whatnot for $83. Then after fees, we were left with $74.99 to add back into the sneaker collection fund, which means that we had a profit of $27.99. So, after all of those sales, after selling every pair of sneakers in the $20 sneaker collection that was not on the clock, we have a new sneaker collection fund of $395.97, which I think, I think might be enough to buy a used pair of Lost and Founds on Goat or eBay. So let's check them out. All right, so the two places that I'm gonna to look to try and find a pair of the Lost and Found Jordan 1s for a decent price are eBay and Goat, because like I said earlier on in the episode, I've gone to a lot of the local consignment stores and resale shops, and they all either have them for way too much or just don't have them at all. So that's unfortunate. It kind of is what it is when it comes to like local consignment stores. So my plan is to go on eBay and Goat and try and find a pair for a good price that's maybe used Hopefully not, but probably used, and uh, we'll just see what happens. All right, so the first place we're gonna go is eBay, because I've had good luck with them a lot recently. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of customs, which is weird. <laughs> I love customs, but not when I'm looking for a pair of uh, actual Jordan 1 Lost and Founds. There is one pair right here for 355, but eh, it's a kid size, I think. Yeah, this one's pre-owned from kid size, 110. Pre-owned for $600? Oh, that's the, no, that's the Lost and Founds. So there is one pair right here in a size eight for 325, but there's no, this guy has no feedback. So I don't know if I trust that. Um, it is a bid, so it's a 325 bid, and then 375 final sale with $14.95 shipping. It's not a size I could rock. Not that I need another pair. I've got like three pairs right now because I bought them all for reset. I didn't hit on one pair. Let's move on to the next the next one. Okay, so it looks like going over to GOAT. Let's see what we can find. All right, so let's go to the used section, size nine. Uh, seems like the lowest price is 390, 390, okay. The pair looks all right. Looks like it's in good condition. I don't know what that is with fees though. I don't think we have enough to get it with shipping. Yeah, 404.50 after shipping. So we're not gonna be able to grab this pair, which is unfortunate. Size nine is my size and I would like to have another pair, but hey, it is what it is. Let's check size eight and a half. So we got two pairs, one for 375, one for 425. The 375 pair actually looks good based on these pictures. So I've checked a couple other sizes and I haven't really found anything. So let's just go ahead and grab the size eight and a half. And it looks like we can grab the size eight and a half with the box with all the accessories, or I think all the accessories. It says damaged box, so it's possible it doesn't have like the receipt or something like that. But we're able to grab this pair for 389.50, which means that we will have $6.47 left. So it's not a lot, but hey, we don't need anything else because this will be the final shoe for the clock. So let's just go ahead and buy it. And uh, I guess wait a couple weeks till it gets here. See you guys then. So guys, it's finally here, the final shoe for the clock. I kind of can't believe it. The shoe that I've been looking for probably for the longest amount of time out of all the shoes on the clock, but the one that was by far the most expensive, and we finally have it. I believe I paid around 380 something for this pair of shoes. Let's find out if it was worth the money we paid. So here we go. It really is crazy to think that this is the last episode of this series. I'll be doing more thrifting videos like this um, in the next couple weeks, so don't worry about that. There'll be more coming, but I would love to know you guys' thoughts as to what you guys would like to see from season three of the $20 sneaker collection. I opened the wrong box. So I ordered multiple shoes from GOAT, and uh, <laughs> that was not the one that I meant to unbox. Here's the shoe that I meant to unbox. <laughs> Let's do it. The other shoe was a pair of New Balances, if you guys are wondering. I'll do a video on them later on. So, okay, once again, moment of truth. Here we go. So inside this box, we have a pair of Air Jordan 1 Lost and Founds with apparently the box. I forgot that the box came with it. It's been a little while since we ordered it. I actually went to Hawaii in between. No idea what the condition on the shoe is gonna be like. I obviously just saw pictures with you guys, so I'm not sure how good it's gonna be, but this is a size eight and a half. So I could fit it, but I probably, I'm just either gonna leave it on the clock or give it away, I'm not 100% sure yet. But here we go. The box is a little bit dented, but it's not too bad. I mean, compared to a lot of the shoes on the clock, they don't even have boxes, so. Let's pop the top on this box and see what we get. Oh, we got all the extras, good. Okay, so obviously I bought this pair off GOAT, you guys saw that. We do have the receipt, 
which is good. I didn't expect that. And then the uh, sneakers themselves come in this really cool paper that looks like a bunch of um, old Nike ad paper. I'm so excited, I can't even believe it. I have like a bunch of pairs of Lost and Founds, but this is the most special pair to me because this is a pair that ends off the series. This is a pair that I worked genuinely pretty hard to get. So here we go. There it is. I'm not gonna smell it, because it is lightly worn. <laughs> But uh, I do have to say, it's actually in really, really good condition. I mean, wow, there's like no heel drag in the bottom. Look at that, that's crazy. We got basically no star loss in the front, a little bit of creasing on the toe. But other than that, and the laces being done, um, I mean, it's basically perfect. That's really, really great. I didn't know what to expect. You never really know what to expect when you buy used shoes, but this one is actually in really great condition. There is one stone in the outsole, but that's like the biggest complaint that I have. <laughs> so that's not bad, can't believe it. We're doing it, we're finishing off the clock. Let me grab this shoe. Now that you guys have seen it, let me throw it on the clock and see what it looks like. Do I need to make this a little bit wider so you guys can see it? Here is the stupid heavy clock for the last time. It doesn't get easier. There we go, okay, guys. Not the apothecary board. Oh, we're good. What? <laughs> Out of nowhere. With, uh, with that happening, Let's just move right into it. Let me put the laces behind the back of the tongue so it looks a little bit cleaner. Here it is, the final shoe on the clock at the one o'clock position. The Air Jordan 1 Lost and Found. I feel like we should have some special music. Andrew, if you can add some special music. There, I added some out. There it is, the clock is officially, officially done. I can't believe it guys, this is crazy. This has been 33 episodes in the making, which is pretty much, I think I did one episode a week. So basically around 33 weeks. There was a couple weeks where I missed one or a couple weeks where I did two, but overall around 33 weeks worth of work. But guys, with that, we pretty much wrap up the entire $20 sneaker collection. Thank you all so much for the incredible support. Please let me know in the comment section down below what shoes or what concepts you guys would like to see me do next in season three of the $20 sneaker collection. To give you guys a little bit of information as to uh, how much money we made over the entire series, our total profit after buying all of these shoes. So this is probably what? maybe like a thousand or two thousand dollars worth of shoes, maybe even more. We had profited a total of $1,732.81. So that plus this is how much we made in the last 33 episodes. And we still have $6.47 left in the sneaker collection fund, which is crazy. So we can go out to like, what can you even get with $6.47? You can almost get a pair of apothecary socks if you guys want to check out apothecary. Once again, there is a link in the description below. A cheesesteak maybe at a cheap cheesesteak place? I don't know. Should we use that as the seed money for the next series? That would be crazy, that would be tough. I don't know, maybe we should do it. But guys, thank you again for the incredible support. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't yet. And if this is your first time watching one of the episodes of the $20 Sneaker Collection, you can check out the entire playlist in the description below. Watch from episode one to episode 33 to watch the entire clock get built. It was a crazy experience, I had a blast. But as always, thanks so much for watching, once again, for probably the third time, and I'll see you all in the next one.